Magnesium is one of those trace minerals when once you have spent more than let's say 10 to 15 minutes reading or watching a video like this about, you immediately add it to your Amazon basket because there is no downside to it whatsoever. So we're gonna jump straight into this. The role of boron as a bad boy mineral for anabolic effects. Either by the hands of your boy Joseph here or by science nerds, you will eventually be supplementing boron. So let's begin with fundamentally what we are talking about here. A trace mineral that is rarely discussed, underused, and frankly, in my personal opinion, disrespected amongst individuals that are looking to optimize every single element of perhaps their health and physiology, and most certainly their testosterone and their anabolism. Current research is that it is a non-essential trace mineral. However, this will change as the quantity of quality studies has increased around its majestic utility towards enhancing this male endocrinology and overall health promotion. Like I say, if you spend, I mean, take the end of this video and trust me, you'll add it to your stack. I, I believe it's fundamentally a uh, no-brainer and inexpensive being one of the benefits that we'll cover in, uh, you know, towards the latter part of the video. So what's really interesting to note is this, well, I wouldn't say interesting, I would say heartbreaking phenomenon to be aware of is the idea that the soil has no, has nothing in it anymore. You've heard this notion that the soil is void of minerals, nutrients, and one of the ones that is pivotal towards having um, you know, you know, value in that sense in the foods that we eat is having boron used in essential micronutrients for agriculture. Now. There are no, if there are no trace minerals found in the soil, then equally none of the fruits will yield boron in the foods that we are, we are eating. So there's a, there's a massive if, issue with uh, soil starvation in that regard. Now, many people will say, you know, but Joseph, and, and, and to be honest, I agree. I've actually <laughs> apologized for the way that I phrased this here in the, in the mind map. Because I say you can't supplement your way out of a poor diet, but you can indeed find some forms of boron in the foods that you are eating. And I'm going to go through them in just a moment. However, it's really important for me to highlight the fact that we can't ensure the bioavailability of boron in depleted foods if the soil hasn't been supplemented with boron in the first place. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficulty to measure is the point I'm trying to make and which is why I believe supplementation is actually advantageous in this particular case. However, if you find yourself eating a lot of the foods that I'm gonna reference in a moment, maybe there is a case for you getting adequate amounts of boron in your diet. Now, it is suggested by the scientific literature that most people are meeting between one to three milligrams of boron through these food sources. However, However, to incur the benefits that I'll speak about in just a moment relative to boron in the diet, you need to double that figure. The benefits from the research and the literature that I have um, looked at say you're looking at six milligrams as a bare minimum. So are you saturating your diet with apples, with coffee, with dried beans, with milk, with potatoes, with dried apricots, with avocados, with dates, with raisins, all these things have boron in them. If, you know, if you take something like uh, avocados, for example, they are in soil that has been supplemented with boron. And like I said, the research suggests benefits begin only at six milligrams of boron every single day. So speaking of uh, benefits, the functions of this magic mineral are plentiful. The first one is it turns you into Wolverine, baby. Maybe that is an over-exaggeration, but the point I'm trying to refer to here is that it has key functions and benefits around optimal bone growth and health, giving you that, I mean, not quite adamantium skeleton, but we can, we can, certainly, we can certainly see that there's an improvement with and without this trace mineral. Also, the interesting continuity of that analogy is that it has excellent utility in the, what would you say, the acceleration in which wounds uh, heal. There was actually a study done whereby they were supplementing boron in certain hospitals and the control group, which was boron supplementation between six and 10 milligrams, this was a topical uh, cream that boron was used in, healed wounds at three times the normal rate. So very, very interesting uh, study there. And I hope that analogy wasn't lost on you. 
Another key factor to highlight here is the modulator of hormones such as estrogen, testosterone, and also um, the aiding of magnesium absorption, which mitigates cortisol in the blood. And we all know there's an inverse relationship between cortisol and also testosterone. There is a phenomenon uh, called cortisol steel, and I mentioned that in my last video, I believe. And that is a phenomenon whereby the same resources are used, which are used to make testosterone, are also used to make cortisol. So if you're in chronic stress situations, and you know, I have to, I have to highlight the context here is chronic stress. A certain amount of cortisol is necessary for overall homeostasis, right? But if you're in chronic stress situations, too much cortisol, that is going to be taken away from the resources that you are used to make free base testosterone and, and, and turn on masculine uh, gene markers. And it's also got an overall anti-inflammatory effect in the body and inflammation is the start of all diseases. There's actually some really interesting research about the mitigation of things like arthritis, osteo, arth, uh, osteoporosis uh, later on in life and supplementation with uh, boron. Third point to make here is the increased uh, testosterone levels happen because boron's role of lowering sex hormone binding globulin, which binds up testosterone. So just a quick little, a quick little, um, what would you say, review of how that happens is, it is how it says, actually literally, is that testosterone binds to sex hormone binding globulin and therefore cannot permeate into the cells, uh, cannot be synthesized by AR receptors, uh, androgen receptors, which then move the testosterone into the gene and turn on genes that display heightened masculine characteristics that we, we fundamentally want to see. And if you want to, you know, more information on that, please check out the previous video on how I delineate the sensitivity of androgen receptors being a key, a key factor that you need to be um, optimizing as, you know, not just optimizing testosterone, but also optimizing AR sensitivity. So the binding process doesn't allow for free base testosterone to express itself via AR and upregulate up genes in uh, you know, muscle mass, bone density. It could be you know, deeper voice, it could be hair, it could be all those elements that are associated with heightened masculine characteristics. So another, uh, another point for boron here. And the fourth point is also don't touch my D. Pardon the pun, terrible pun, horrible pun there. But basically, there is an interesting process by which the presence of boron in your endocrine system actually inhibits certain enzymes that break down vitamin D. And that enzyme is called 25-hydroxy vitamin. And it essentially starts to eat away at vitamin D in your system. And boron mitigates the effect of this enzyme, which basically means that vitamin D has a longer lasting and more potent effect on your body, which impacts testosterone levels as well. So we can see boron, just to kind of simplify some of these attributes here, being a key factor in maybe not some of the direct ways testosterone is synthesized. I mean, maybe you can make an account for sex hormone binding globulin, but indirectly through optimization of magne magnesium, optimization of things like vitamin D, and all of these you know, pre-minerals you know, minerals and magnesium and pre-vitamins that are so, so important for the synthesization of free base testosterone in your uh, blood. There's some also interesting anecdotal claims that I took from a couple uh, videos when I was researching this topic, but the six year old woman was saying that she was taking nine milligrams of boron first day she feel, feels better and every day since. There are many reasons for me to take it. She's got osteopenia, which is muscle wastage, I believe, uh, arthritis, hormone imbalance and also uh, magnesium absorption is something that she's looking to uh, optimize on. So all, all the factors that that uh, boron is gonna have an, a, a direct or indirect influence as a constitution of, let's say, magnesium absorption, for example. Another individual was saying how their rheumatoid uh, uh, arthritis and osteoarthritis has been affected by the use of ionized boron for a few days, but without a doubt, they can feel a huge difference my allergies to milk and soy are more pronounced than before because the boron has been helping my inflammation so much. I'm only using a few drops daily. So it looks like she's using a topical form of boron. And this individual is saying that there is also evidence, not just anecdotally, but empirically in studies, in peer-reviewed studies, that 
boron has an influence on cognitive uh, abilities. So this individual is saying when supplementing with boron in the past, I found my memory and focus were freaking insane, like I was hung hungry for knowledge uh, and getting assignments done for school. So just to tie a nice little neat bow on this, an easy argument for you to start stacking uh, boron right after this video, it's relatively inexpensive. And I mentioned this before, I, I prefaced this before I went into the video that one of the key benefits is that it's not that expensive. It's not that expensive. I think um, this is the boron that I use. I'll put this up so people can see. That's my boron. Now, boron, this is a six milligrams uh, serving. So just the right amount. I do very well on this. And maybe it's because my body weight isn't, uh, isn't that high. But this is 90 tablets here, two tablets per day. So what was that? Uh, a month and a half use. And I think that was around 10 pounds. Uh, so uh, 12, 12 dollars, I think, in US currency. Oh no, sorry, I've made a mistake here. I've got 180 tablets. So this is three months, three months use. Th three months of boron supplementation for 10 pounds, 12 dollars. So very inexpensive. Second point I would highlight here is the low li likelihood of adverse effects unless overdosing, such as taking more than 20 milligrams plus. So the sweet spot from the literature that I've observed is between six and 10. However, they've kind of pushed it and, and, and seen where you can go, where the kind of diminishing returns come. And it's usually over 20 people start to get digestion issues. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate. I, I don't think there's any reasoning unless you may be very, very heavy to supplement more than 10 milligrams uh, per day. The physiological benefits are plentiful, bone growth and maintenance, wound healing properties, estrogen, testosterone, and vitamin D regulation, age and magnesium absorption, and reduces uh, inflammation. And there's evidence of fighting arthritis towards the latter stages of life. If that is a concern uh, for you, maybe it's hereditary, maybe it's uh, genetic. And also some of the studies that I have uh, looked at demonstrate utility against certain cancers such as prostate and lung. And all of this information I got from this particular study, nothing boring, uh, boring about boron. Tremendous name, by the way. And some of the benefits here highlighted in, uh, in pink. And also you can see some utility demonstration, preventative and therapeutic effects against number of cancers, including prostate, cervical, lung, and multiple non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And also ameliorating effects of uh, chemothera chemotherapeutic uh, agents in case that is a uh, something that you're using at the moment hopefully not so gentlemen let me know did i convince you have you already added supplement to your amazon um basket i am nearly out of my boron so i will be adding some right now gentlemen these are not theories today these are cold hard facts uh, let me know if you've been supplementing boron what your experiences are any other free game i think it's very very i, I would love to hear I would love to hear. But anyway, speak soon.